my pouring friends. I don't think this video will be very long. It's just a really, really quick tip on how to help your flow troll be nice and creamy and smooth. And it comes from a comment that I had on another YouTube video where a person was just wondering about the stringiness in one of the uh, other videos and we decided that it was the flow troll in her bottle. One of the best things that I've ever come across and one of the best tips I've ever come across is what I'm just about to show you and it's um, to strain your flow troll even before it goes into your paints. Remember to always just gently give your flow troll a nice tip like this. It doesn't have to be a vigorous shake. A vigorous shake will be adding air bubbles in that you don't want in. I mean, even if you're going to let your paint sit around for months, just avoid doing it. It's good practice. It stops you from getting in the habit. What I also do is I decant my flow troll into another easier to control container. This one, as you can see, is well marked with having 100% flow troll compared to others that I have around that are well marked in regards to the pouring medium and the type of pouring medium that is in here because I have quite quite a few, well really three different types of pouring mediums that I uh, use. So we're going to use a demonstration out of a one litre container uh, just because it's much easier for me to handle than the four litre containers that are around here. These um, I like to also ooh, take around with me to workshops because they're nice and portable and even though I make all of my pouring medium up before I go into workshops, um, sometimes we demonstrate and sometimes we run out. But alas, that's not what this is about. So we've given our flow troll a nice little gentle tip quite a few times, 10 times. If you Open your flow troll and you haven't poured it, you'll notice that the first part of it's clear and then the second part's milky. And they must be the two primary ingredients that separate when the product has been sitting for quite a while. Anyhow, we don't want that. We want it to be nice and mixed up. So, you open up your lid. You get an old stocking. It doesn't matter what colour it is. At first, I used to be nervous about... Um, any kind of colour coming out of the stocking, but it doesn't. It doesn't drip. You know that our stockings are designed to um, stay on our legs and they don't stain our legs even when we sweat. Well, I might have cut this a bit too thin and you don't even need to cut it. I mean, I could just do it like this and or you can cut it and put the toe, stretch the toe over it, but I find that the toe part in some stockings, oh, where is the toe part gone? so I can speak to it. Because they're reinforced, it's extra thick and it just means the flow troll is going to pour through a little bit slower. And, you know, all we're doing is straining to make sure there are no lumps. So we don't, we don't need to have that extra bit of fabric for the flow troll to move through. Of course, I don't know if you can see, but my fingers are being not very cooperative. You know how it is. You're trying to do a demonstration and things will become more complicated than they need to be. So stretch your flow troll over your spout. Have an elastic band. Can you see? There you go. Stretch your flow troll over your spout. Have an elastic band. Oh, and tie it into place much like you would tie a ponytail. I'm making this look very clumsy. It's really not this difficult. But when I have to not put my head over there so you can see what's going on, for some reason it seems to be more difficult than ever before. It's easier if you don't have any excess bits slopping over. So just trim that off for yourself. Get your decantering um, bottle or whatever you want to transfer your flow troll into. Or if you are mixing paints up, you know, have your container ready. Oh, open it up. And... There you have it. Now it can take a bit of time. I actually didn't realise it was going to take this much time. But you 
could just leave it like this, you know, it's just going to strain through. Your other alternative is to use a tea bag strainer, you know, a tea strainer, not necessarily a tea bag strainer. If you give your bottle a gentle push, you get more momentum and it flows out, but you can feel scared. Like it's not really, nothing's going to happen. It's not going to burst. Can you actually see what's happening there? I'm trying to find where the camera, oh, there we go. It is, see how when I push on it for the flow troll to come through, it sort of makes a bubble, but it's not going to burst. It just comes through with greater force and momentum. And as the fabric becomes more saturated with the flow troll, it comes out through much more quickly. And that'll do for this demonstration. And I will show you how much I have poured. You know that the bottle that I started with was empty and this contains one litre. And it's now, well, I can read it. It's up to 400 ml. So that didn't take long. The other tip is use marbles or your, or your gemstones and pop them in your bottle for quick stirring. When you do your tilting of this, when, you want to, when you're ready to use it, the stones act as a way to help mix everything together more efficiently and lift things up from the bottom. You'll notice that uh, many other bottles have a little marble in the bottom. See, hear that? And that's for exactly helping the same process. So, you know, add it into your stuff and it will help you have a much more efficient mixing process. So that's about it, a tip on flow troll. I hope you're having a really good day. I'm gonna do another experiment now, but that's for a different video. Happy pouring everyone.